Saudi Tech Konaka. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm joined by my friend Ming, who is a PT, and you can follow her journey on Instagram at Naya Eat Trains Loves. I will link it down below. And so Ming is Thai and she has also did you grow up abroad or you, you spent a lot of time abroad? Uh, I grew up in Thailand. Okay. I studied in a Thai school, but I've been working abroad for yes. some time. So she has a good balance of Thai life and international life. We got talking and we were discussing body image. If you've watched some of my older videos, you would have seen I mentioned going shopping here as a thicker girl can mm. be hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thigh ratio to the thigh ratio in the clothes here they're not adding up. True. So we thought today would be a good video to kind of compare body image. We're gonna start with the UK and then I'll hand over to Ming to kind of give her views and her insight and also the Thai perspective. So in the UK, and I'll say in a lot of the Western world, in the early 2000s, it was the very model chic. It was very, the Kate Moss quote, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. Very slim, very size zero. This was the sort of Paris Hilton days, Nicole Richie. I remember that. Yeah, that was everywhere. And then I think there's been the, the move to the, the bigger bodies now, voluptuous, thicker, BBL lifestyle. And as a girl who has a naturally bigger body, I was like, this is a great movement. Yeah, I love this. Yeah. Our time has come. But when do you think that was the mark of the change, like the shift from mm. like the skinny to like a voluptuous? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I remember growing up, Jennifer Lopez mm. was the figure. She was the, like, if you think about somebody who's like, you know, having like hourglass and like curvy, she would yeah. be a perfect example. But she said, all Latinas are built like that. And most of, actually, most of the ladies around the world are built like that, but they're just not represented. 100%. I definitely think JLo helped a lot, but I don't think, I think it though, it still took a long time after her. Mm. And as much as I hate to admit this, I definitely think it was a Kardashian effect. Because I feel like they really, push the bbl lifestyle mm. because i don't in all honesty i don't really feel like we've had until much more recently a natural curvy praise because kardashians came with the bbl phase and then the bbl body shape became a thing where it's got you have a skinny like skinny stomach small waist mm -hmm. big, big bun. bun and then like tiny legs but on the flip side i love the fact that the bigger body is it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I feel, I feel, even though right now the skinny is back, but mm. as people has been exposed to more diversity mm. of beauty, yes. I feel like ladies with um, thick bum, thick thighs, and having curves, mm. they have more space yes. in the beauty world. 100%. In relation to though body image and things like that, one thing I will say, a change that's happened for me when i was back in the uk i was one of many many people had my body shape many people were like me mm -hmm. and so i definitely felt a pressure that i don't feel here and as much as i complain about the clothes sizes in here mm -hmm. i have never felt more comfortable in my own body as i have here because mm -hmm. i walk down the street and the average thai woman we are not gonna we can never compete your legs and my legs are never going to be the same. No. We're different genetics. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I cannot ever grow legs like yours or bum like yours. This is I me, cannot. Like, and, and because I know that we're just very different, I no longer have that comparison, that competition, that, oh, why aren't I as good as them? Because mm. I'm like, we're not even in the same league. Yeah, yeah, you don't look li like us. Exactly. So we don't look, we look the same. Like, our hair look different. Yeah, our, yeah. Our skin, not so different. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually surprisingly freeing. Although mm. you, you stick out because obviously you're different, it's freeing not having that societal pressure of trying to fit in. Because mm. when you don't fit in, you're like, okay, I might as well stand all the way out. <laughs> I, I think it's very similar to me. When I'm here in Thailand as Thai, I feel judged. Mm. I feel, even though I look pretty thin, Right, yeah. but for Thai standards, I'm very thick. Yeah. I'm very muscly, mm. um, and I do feel big. Yeah, even though I'm not big. No, yeah. And yeah. when I went abroad, I feel fine. Mm. You know, yeah. I don't feel that gaze on me. I actually feel pretty good. I'm like, 
I'm, I'm I'm actually tiny. I'm, I'm I think I look good. Yeah, yeah you know. Of course. <laughs> but, but then like well, once I'm back in Thailand, I feel big because people around me too, like yes. strangers, walk up to me like. Look at those arms. Wow. I know. How did then body image affect you growing up here? Like, did it ever affect you? Did it play a role or? I think it came on and off. Mm -hmm. As a little girl, I, like I wasn't really aware of how I looked that much. Yeah. Like I didn't really care how much, like the, how I looked. Like was I a pretty girl or was I was I a skinny or like my skin color didn't affect me. I was quite dark. Yeah. When I when I was um, younger, but. It does kind of affect me as I grow up. Maybe like mid school, yeah. when you're about to be a teenager. Yeah. That's when people around you make you aware of how you look. Yes. And they will be like, you're gonna be, you're gonna look better if you have fairer skin. Or gonna look better if you lose some weight. Mm. You're gonna this and that. You yeah. know that it's like, can I just? look good yeah, can't you, you know exist? yeah <laughs> can, can i just exist why do i have to get this and that thick there was a time that i would go back home and i would just scrub my skin because i want my skin to be fairer but yeah. it didn't get any fairer maybe a little bit smoother yeah. but the color of my skin was the same i mentioned on my channel before about colorism and things like that and for those that don't know colorism is basically discriminating someone based on the, the complexion rather than their actual skin color like racism so for example with colorism a lot of people think if you're lighter skin then mm. you're more beautiful you're more this you're more attractive mm. and it's a load of rubbish and so i've mentioned that sort of stuff before and to me when i speak to other minor like i think minorities like versus the western world it's interesting that this concept of colorism fair skin is universal mm. like so i'm half jamaican and if you're lighter, you're viewed as more attractive. You're, mm. And thankfully, some things are changing there and in other black communities. But yeah, like people will bleach their skin to try and achieve like my skin color or lighter. And and it's just wild to me that we, we place your worth on your how tongue. you look. Yeah, yes. and it, it, it just it baffles my mind. And then and then we kind of as a as societies we we teach children. You need to be lighter, you need to be skinnier, you need to be... And then when they grow up to have different, maybe eating disorders or different things, mm. society's like, well, what's your and problem? It, and like, it's all, all around the world right now. As you said, it was other people telling you, like, you're, you're, you're not this, you're not that, you should be this, you should be that. And as, as a mixed race person, I had similar. Like, my hair's big, it's curly. It took me years. I love them. Thank you. Love, love them. It, it would took be me like... years, though. <laughs> So I'll take your hair, I'll take your arms. <laughs> <laughs> but like, honestly, it took me so long to, to love my curls because growing up, I was told, you'd be so much prettier if you straightened your hair. Mm. And that was what I was always told, like straighten your hair and, and all I'd ever see would be straight hair. And I'd be like, oh, I want straight hair. Thankfully, my parents like banned me from straightening my hair. I used to like go home and beg, can I just, I, I want to straighten my hair, I want to be blonde, I want to be, because that was all that was around me, right? Mm -hmm. Because when I was growing up, now mixed race is huge in the UK. When I was growing up, it wasn't that big. Um, so now everybody is mixed in the so UK. So many people. Well, not well, everyone, but in I London, mean, it's so many. I, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I love it, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, th I think the future of, of many countries will be like that too. I agree. I think the world will be will have like boundaries just mm -hmm. for the map. Yeah. But then like people would look mixed. And I think that's amazing. Growing up, I was always raised like you're mixed, you're both, you're the and then when I enter society mm. via school, that's when shifts change. And that's when I was being told, you're too this, your hair's too big, you're this, you're that. For you, like what do you think it is that influences how we perceive beauty mm. standards and apply it. So for me, I start to feel beauty standards like I don't fit in. Maybe when I was entering, when I was becoming a teenager, mm. like 11, 12. Yeah. Mm, like when you kind of define yourself as, okay, I am a girl now. Yes. So first, your parents. Okay, friends, teachers at school, um, whatever you see on TV or the commercial of, you know, beauty products and you're like, oh, they look so good. Yeah. But then there's nobody looking like me. So you, you want to look like them, of mm -hmm. course, but you're not going to look like them because you don't have same parents, you don't have the same race, you don't, and most of the time, 
people who get the chance to be on those commercials, they are mixed, mm. mixed white, yes. of course. Yeah. So they have lighter skin, they have pointy nose, they have lovely eyes, lovely complexion, everything just like so put together. Yeah. You know, with all the makeup and lighting and everything just look like above and beyond. And you're just like, why can't I just look like that? Mm. There, I know that there are a few like Thai celebrities that are mixed black. To be honest, like, when I think of the actors and stuff, the ones that are mixed are half white. Mm -hmm. um, and I do find it interesting that, I don't, and I don't know closely, uh, this is not my country, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it can help. Yeah. So I don't know if, how much, how many mixed people are mixed with a non-white, and of that, how many of them we just don't see in media? Do you know? As in, uh, yeah. are they there, but we're just not seeing them? Yeah, I, definitely. I, I think that they are there, but they're just not represented in the media. Yeah, there, yeah. there are like Thai Arabs, mm -hmm. Thai African, mm. um, Thai, well, Thai European quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, or even like Thai with like Native American. Wow, yeah, because like I said, very, very rarely see. So that's why I'm always like... Because oh. they're not represented, but they, they, they exist. Yeah, they do yeah. exist a lot. And see, this is why for me, I always, anyone who's watched my other videos, representation is king. A whole demographic is being ignored because mm -hmm. there's just no representation for them. Mm -hmm. Which is, and so uh, Ming sent me some commercials, so I'll, I'll link down below, uh, which show representation of different races. So definitely check that out because it's fascinating stuff. So do you think then, because obviously media then versus now, do you think it has improved or do you think there's still a long way to go? I think we are getting there, but there's still a long way to go. Right now, there are like campaigns, there are people who talk, who discuss, who bring awareness of diversity mm -hmm. that's going to broaden that beauty standards to be um, wider and wider. It's not just like a ruler and that who doesn't fit in that ruler just that doesn't belong. Mm -hmm. So right now, that ruler is getting bigger and bigger, yeah. longer and longer. Another thing is inclusivity. Yes. Um, so I remember when Rihanna when Rihanna launched her Fenty Beauty, it was a big thing. Yes. Big thing because everybody felt inclusive. Yeah. You know, is as a Thai person, I'm not even that dark. Yeah. I can't find concealer or, or foundation. On, on a drugstore. It's wild. I cannot. Like we're basically the same, I would say. Yeah, I cannot. And it's crazy hard. I cannot. And I'm like, I am Thai. And, and I'm not the only person who, yeah. who are this color. There's only three shades of foundation and three shades of, of concealer. And that three shades are not even that different. I don't even think you're dark. Like, like, but, but I'm not fair either. But this is, but as what I mean is though, I would say you're... From the from type of life I've seen, you're quite average. Yeah, I'm pretty average. And the fact that you can't get foundation. Exactly. Is why. <laughs> it is. So there's a lot of people who can't get foundations right. Yeah. One thing that Thailand needs to get rid of is this one size fits all. Because it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I hate that. No, free size. <laughs> that, I hate it. I hate it. But it doesn't fit me. <laughs> I'm like, can we just do sizes? Sizes are there for a reason. On <laughs> 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 so many shops here, I've gone in, I'm like, oh, that's cute. Free size. Oh. Okay, put it back. <laughs> if I go into a local store, yeah. like 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 a lo locally made clothes, mm. I, sometimes I can't fit in. Yeah, like my shoulders are too big, or my lats are too big. Mm. Like I cannot fit in. And this, yeah. Or, or or like my 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 waist are tiny, but my thighs are thick. Yeah, like I can't fit in. It's crazy because like your thighs. Uh, like normal size. Like normal size. <laughs> I know, but what kind of clothes they weren't making? <laughs> like for, the, for who? <laughs> I don't know who's wearing these clothes. But that's that's why Thai people are so obsessed to be skinny. Yes. Like there there, there are procedures to take out some of of the the muscles to make what? to make your your thighs and and your calves look really really small. Take out the muscles. Yeah. But uh, uh, apparently the big. The big muscles would be, yeah. Would, the, the, the big muscle would, would still work, but yeah. but they would take out like. No. It's crazy. That's wild. It, it, mm. Sometimes when I'll be out and about and I'll see a bigger Thai female, I honestly sometimes want to go up to be like, where do you where do you shop? Where are you buying your clothes? <laughs> Tell there, me. There are, there are like uh, the special shops for them. But this is this is even wild though to think. So in the UK, special shops for bigger people would be when you were size like 
25, 26. But they're not even big here. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have that much variety for sizes. Yeah. There's like XS, S, M, mm. XL, done. Listen, do you know how my feelings have been hurt in this country? I bought a dress and it was like triple XL. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Normally for a tie, I'm an M. You know what size I am in your room. You would, I would say you were small. XS. Extra small. Extra yeah. small. That makes, that checks. I was, I was looking at your weight, I was like, definitely at least a small. Like, anything mm. more than that is a lie. <laughs> like, yeah, but in Thailand, I'm an, I'm an M. This, sit, this yeah. a humbling place. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh, but it's not funny. <laughs> All countries have yeah. very strong beauty standards. Yes, yes. Um, and I think, as we mentioned, like, at the moment in the UK, it's very curvy, thick, BBL, voluptuous, da 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 da. But I am seeing a change again and I'm dreading it because mm. it's going back, going full circle. We're going back to that sort of very slim 2000s models. The Kardashians have taken their implants out. Mm. And to be honest, love or hate that family, when they speak, ma waves are made. Like they, they can just put on one little thing and suddenly yeah. sold out. Or they do, they do have a huge influence that yes. for the whole world, even for beauty standards. Exactly. Yeah. For Thailand, I would definitely think the the skinny trend would always exist. Mm -hmm. Like there are gonna be girls who are always gonna crave to be skinny. Yes. And they cannot be skinny enough. Yeah. But I think right now, like when you see shops, like individual shops, like bikini wear, sport wear, you start to see models that have real size, nice. you know, yeah. like curvy people, muscly people. There's more representations of, yeah. of how actual people look like um, on on social media. I like that. Yeah, I, I like that a yeah. lot. I'm like, I'm really proud. Like, yeah. it's going somewhere. Definitely. For me, my ideal beauty standard would be to have no beauty standard. Because, yeah, exactly. Because it, even though like the skinny girls had their era in the 2000s, the bigger girls have had, are having their era now, we shouldn't have eras. It should just be like, your body is your body. Yeah, it should exist throughout. They, they should, th there should be a space for all of them. We, we've covered a lot in this video. Please do drop in the comments if you yeah. agree with anything we said, if you disagreed, why you disagree love to hear other opinions and things on this also why don't you tell us what the beauty standard is like where you are and where you're watching from although actually the bulk of my subscribers are actually in thailand so that would be quite interesting mm. <laughs> what's your opinion on the thai beauty standards please do share how you feel where you belong as you grow up yeah how it's changed how it's changed definitely i'd mm. love I, honestly i would love to know i'd love i'd love to know too yeah and then if you would love to see more videos like this where i'm kind of sitting down with different people and we're just discussing stuff put it in the comments because I, I honestly i love these sort of videos as this is the end of the video i just wanted to say thank you again to ming for coming on thank you for the invitation i had a good Always. time too. also make sure you follow her fitness journey at her instagram which is i'm going to write it down below and I'll also link it down below so go over there and follow her she has amazing you. stuff thank you <laughs> <laughs> and as for you guys please do share some love in the comments hit the subscribe hit the share to your friends to your family do all that good stuff but most importantly have a very very blessed day and until next time I decided to goodbye everyone